feast with the Bean King is a common custom in 17th century Flanders, a secular way to celebrate the Catholic Epiphany. The bean symbolized the guiding star that led the Magi to Bethlehem to worship the baby Christ. Traditionally, the table was set on the evening of January 6, when all religious rituals were already finished, and people returned from church. But the bean, naturally, was kneaded into the dough the day before. The one person who got the bean was proclaimed the bean king. He put on a fake crown, chose a queen, and appointed a staff of courtiers, from minister to jester. This is one of my favorites. It's a Flemish Baroque painting from the 17th century, around the middle of the 17th century. We are here in the last years of the Thirty Years' War. It is painted by Jakob Jordans, a Flemish painter, collaborator of Peter Paul Rubens. And he's one of the most favorite painters in his time in the southern Spanish Habsburg Netherlands. And this is a private party, we can see here. A party um, on the 6th of January, Epiphany. And the, the day of the three kings, the three magicians. And we can see it's, it's a good party. They have a lot of... The word and its shorter form, vino, are fairly common in Britain, less known in the United States. An alternative derivation refers the name to the eating of a dish of beans and bacon, and seems to trace to 1725, when Daniel Day of Wapping, London began to entertain friends near his estate at Fairlop in Essex on the first Friday in July. In the 19th and early 20th centuries, the bean feast often took the form of a trip to some beauty spot, where the meal was provided, e.g., I want a feast, I want a bean. Jacob Jordance was a Flemish painter, draftsman and tapestry designer known for his history paintings, genre scenes and portraits. After Peter Paul Rubens and Anthony van Dyck, he was the leading Flemish Baroque painter of his day. Unlike those contemporaries he never traveled abroad to study Italian painting, and his career is marked by an indifference to their intellectual and courtly aspirations. In fact, except for a few short trips to locations elsewhere in the Low Countries, he remained in Antwerp his entire life. As well as being a successful painter, he was a prominent designer of tapestries.